in the gospel text of today, which is taken from the gospel of Mark chapter 1, verses 40 to 45, we are given a variety of lessons. And the lessons are on first, how we must approach God. Second, how we must pray. Third, how God responds to us. And fourth, how we respond. And this is given to us in the story of the healing of the leper. At the time of Jesus and as the first reading from the book of Leviticus tells us, leprosy was considered an incurable disease. The Old Testament narrates only two instances of the healing of the sister of Moses and Aaron, Miriam, and of the healing of Naaman, the Syrian, only two healings of lepers. But leprosy was not understood then as we understand it today. Leprosy was a term given to any kind of external scale or skin disease. Because the religion practiced at the time of Jesus was a very external religion and Jesus constantly tells about practicing in spirit and in truth, practicing from the heart, but it was externally practiced, so a person's external, the body of an individual, had to a lot to do with worship. So even if there were external skin ailments on the body, which may not have been leprosy as we understand it today, it would be termed as leprosy. And what is even more poignant, what is even sadder, is that lepers were treated worse than animals. The leper was not allowed to live within the community. The leper had to live on the outskirts of the village. And even when the leper came in in order to beg for food, because no one would give a leper a job, and when they came in to beg for food, they had to ring a bell and shout, unclean, unclean. And the reason why they had to do that is because others would be warned of their approach. Others would move away and not even let the shadow of a leper fall on him or her, lest they be contaminated by that shadow. So they were regarded as outcasts. They lived on the margins of society. It is one such leper who comes to Jesus. And the first part, as I said, is the approach to God. He approaches God, both physically and verbally, by showing dependence on God. He implores Jesus, he kneels down. This gesture of kneeling down and imploring is an indication that he is willing to give everything into the hands of Jesus, into the hands of God. Even before he can verbalize or say his prayer, even before he can utter the words from his mouth, he shows what those words will be to this action. And so his gesture of kneeling is an indication that he will do what the Lord says. That he is at the service of the Lord. That he is at the disposal of the Lord. That he is dependent on the Lord. And this is the first step or the first lesson which the leper gives us. The second is the con of his prayer which tells us how we must constantly and consistently pray because his words in his prayer are if you will 
you can make me clean. What do these words mean? These words mean this, that the leper is showing now through his words or verbally what he has shown in action. He is saying he is willing to do the Lord's will. If it is the will of the Lord that he not be healed, he is willing for that. He knows that nothing is impossible for the Lord and that is what the phrase if you will means nothing is impossible for you. But it also means only if it is your will. Only if it fits in with your plan, not my plan. In the only prayer which Jesus taught his disciples, Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 to 13, Luke chapter 11, verses 2 to 4, which is called the Lord's Prayer, which we recite every day at the Eucharist, we pray what the leper says, and we pray what Jesus says also in Gethsemane. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So in his prayer, in his petition, in his words, the leper shows what already he did through his actions. If you will, you can make me clean. So he cedes the initiative to Jesus. He cedes the initiative to God. He will not take the initiative. He will be at God's disposal. He will be dependent on God. He will be available and do what God requires of him. Now that must be the content of all our prayer. And that must be the effect of our prayer. The third part of this beautiful story is the approach of Jesus. Jesus reaches out and touches the leper. This is a very, very significant gesture. This person who had to shout unclean, unclean. This person whose shadow could not be allowed to fall on another. This person who had to live on the outskirts of society. This person who was marginalized and treated as an outcast. Is treated not merely as a person, but as a friend. As someone who is loved. As someone who is valuable. As someone who is precious. So the gesture of Jesus in touching him, like the gesture of the leper in kneeling, is a gesture which Jesus shows also in his words. Through this gesture of touching, what he is saying is that the leper cannot contaminate others. That one cannot be contaminated because one touches a person who one considers unclean. He did not need to touch the leper because the healing takes place through his words and yet very deliberately he touches him and this touch is a touch of love this touch is a touch of friendship this touch is a touch which then repeats the leper's prayer in the words of the Lord when he says of course I want to. I will. Be clean. And in the fourth and final part, even though the leper is commanded to be silent because Jesus does not want to be known merely as a healer, as a miracle worker, as an exorcist, he wants to be known as the Messiah who would suffer and die. And that is why he commands the leper not to say anything to anyone. The leper cannot be silent. His heart is so filled with what Jesus has done for him that he has to proclaim it. So the leper has been shown as a very consistent person. He is a person who lives out what is within him. Because 
what is within him allowed him to kneel and implore. What is within him allowed him to cede the initiative to God. What is within him allowed him to show the dependence by accepting that healing. And what is within him allowed him to proclaim the good news. Each one of us, like the leper, has a possible area in our lives in which we are in need of healing. With some of us, it might be an external ailment. With others, it might be an internal ailment. The story of today teaches us that we have to approach the Lord like the leper approached. Approach the Lord. The first step is our disposition, is our attitude, is our frame of mind and heart. If it is like that of the leper, which is shown through his kneeling, in which he cedes the initiative to God, this will also come up in our verbal prayer. And like Jesus did with the leper, he will reach out and touch us also, but we have to want to be touched. We have to want to be healed very often. We say we want something, but don't mean it. And so therefore the leper showed very clearly through his external actions and his words what he wanted. And we need to do the same. If there is that synchrony like there was in the case of the leper, the Lord reaches out and touches him and we also will be healed. How then will we proclaim our healing?